Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. And developing this noon, a standoff scene unfolding in a neighborhood northwest of downtown where police believe a man who shot his wife is holed up in a house. Devin Clark is live near the scene, but Devin, we understand that there's another crime scene a few miles away where police say all of this actually started. That's right, David Ursula. Police say that the shooting scene actually took place on General McMullen, which is about eight miles away. But they believe that the man who fired the gun is near this area, somewhere on Cincinnati or around Cincinnati, holed up in a house. They say he is armed and dangerous, and they have reason to believe that uh, he could potentially do something that could put the community at risk, which is why they've evacuated nearby homes in the area. We're actually keeping a safe distance on West Ashby and St. Anne. And going back to that original scene, police say that the man shot his 41-year-old wife three times. Chief McManus says that the suspect, 52-year-old Javier De Hoyos, had been waiting for his wife and intercepted her on the way to work. Now, we understand De Hoyos drove alongside her, firing into her vehicle. He left the scene and is still at large. Again, police believe he is here just northwest of downtown, holed up in a house. Police say earlier this month there was another incident involving the couple. Police say that he threatened her with a gun. She made a report, and we understand that he had at least one active warrant from that incident. In fact, the threat was made, we believe, in response to the protective order being served the day prior. So he waited for her. Uh, when she got out of work, he threatened her with a firearm. Uh, and we walked a, an arrest warrant for him that same day. And we understand that there is an active aggravated assault warrant from this incident. At this hour, we understand the woman who was shot is in a hospital at stable condition. And again, out here just northwest of downtown near West Ashby, we see a bevy of law enforcement officials, including SWAT team members. They're hoping that they can bring this situation to a peaceful end. But of course, that remains to be seen because, as we mentioned, police say that this man who they're looking for shot his wife three times. Reporting live just west of, northwest of downtown, Devin Clark, K at 12 News. Thank you, Devin. San Antonio police say mental illness has led to a murder on the south side. They say a 19-year-old man stabbed and killed his mother and sister. It happened in their home in the 300 block of Gillette Boulevard. Katrina Weber reports police say he attacked them in the presence of other relatives. Just as the day was beginning, San Antonio police were working to figure out how and why two lives came to an end. Inside a home in the 300 block of Gillette, they found a 42-year-old woman and her 23-year-old daughter, both stabbed to death. The suspect, they say, was a 19-year-old man, the son and brother of the victims. I do know that, that there, are some, some, uh, there are some mental health issues associated with this. Still, police were at a loss to explain the sudden violence. So was at least one neighbor. I never would see any, any cops stop by. I mean, you didn't see nothing, no calls, no nothing. Adelisa Quiroz says they seemed like peaceful people, so she was surprised to see the scene unfolding at their home. Wow. Yeah. So young. Very. And the mental illness, is, is, it does it do, it's a big factor. I mean... Investigators hope to get some answers from the suspect, who they say made no attempt to get away. They took him into custody at the scene. Among the many questions police still have is why the suspect would have lashed out at those two family members. They say there were other relatives home at the time, including his grandmother. There was a 22-year-old female in the house with an, with an infant child. Those three were unharmed. How much those other relatives may have seen is still unclear. But based on what police know so far, they say the suspected killer will face criminal charges. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. The coronavirus concerns are now prompting a major announcement from the NCAA. Several college basketball conference tournaments have been canceled moments before tip. This now puts the NCAA tournament at risk. The Big Ten, Big 12, and the SEC tournaments announced they were off, and other conferences expected to follow suit. Matter of fact, Texas and Texas Tech were supposed to tip off at 11 o'clock this morning. The teams were actually on the floor warming up when they were pulled off minutes before tip. The men's NCAA tournament, one of the most popular events on the American sports calendar, and again, that tournament could be in jeopardy. March Madness draws hundreds of thousands of fans to arenas from coast to coast. And more news, another member of the Utah Jazz has tested positive for the coronavirus, Donovan Mitchell. More on the NBA situation coming up in sports. 
We want to also keep you up to date on all coronavirus related cancellations that may affect you. One of the latest, the PGA has announced changes as well. In their statement, the PGA commissioner says, quote, PGA tour events across all tours will currently proceed as scheduled, but will do so without fans, unquote. The policy starts on Friday. It'll affect the Valero Texas Open, which takes place right here in San Antonio. This year, it's set to take place March 30th through April 5th. And the UIL Boys State Basketball Tournament taking place at the Alamo Dome will go on as planned, but only with a limited number of fans in attendance. The tournament is taking place today through Saturday. People who have already bought tickets will be able to go, but no additional tickets are going to be sold. You can find more information about that on KSAT.com, of course. And more changes over the last 24 hours. Many local universities have expanded spring break and announced online classes only when they resume. And, of course, the NBA once again, suspended games indefinitely. You can find a comprehensive list of all changes and cancellations that may affect you. Just go to our website, KSED.com. Meantime, we are still waiting for the next group of passengers to disembark from the Grand Princess cruise ship. They are due to arrive at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland for quarantine. We already have 98 passengers from the ship who arrived Tuesday, and we are told all of them had no symptoms. And this is what the stock market is doing right now. Again, over fears of the coronavirus, a lot of, a, of, of dropping in the stock market down 825 points. But keep in mind, it was down 2,000 points earlier today. ABC's Megan Tavizian is in New York, and she's got the latest for us. A country in crisis. I have decided to take several strong but necessary actions to protect the health and well-being of all Americans. Here in the U.S. and around the world, coronavirus now a global pandemic, the first in a decade, according to the World Health Organization. The death toll at home and abroad rising. Plus, President Trump addressing the nation, instituting more sweeping travel restrictions. Flights from Europe to the United States banned for the next 30 days with few exceptions. Anything coming from Europe to the United States is what we are discussing. As more Americans in desperate need of COVID-19 testing and supplies, Trump announcing insurance companies will waive all co-payments for coronavirus testing. The White House also promising to take emergency action to give workers financial relief, including deferring tax payments for people and businesses. He also called on Congress to offer a payroll tax cut. This as a new warning from top health officials on the speed of the spread. It is 10 times more lethal than the seasonal flu. I think that's something that people can get their arms around and understand. And now the State Department advising all U.S. citizens to reconsider all travel abroad. And as for President Trump's payroll tax proposal, that has strong opposition from both parties on Capitol Hill. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. We are still waiting to learn the teen's identity who was shot and killed in far west Bear County. The Bear County Sheriff's Office responded to a 9-11 call around 9 last night at a home in the 11,500 block of Sangria. That's where they found the teenage boy dead from his wounds. Investigators have not revealed anything about how that shooting happened, but they did say they had taken a man into custody at the scene. A woman recovering after being hit by a car while crossing the street. It happened just after 11 last night in the 300 block of San Pedro Avenue. That's just north of downtown. According to police, the driver pulled over and helped the woman. She was taken to the hospital and is in critical condition. No word on if the driver will be facing any charges. Police are looking for the suspects involved in a drive-by shooting that happened just before 11 last night in the 6,000 block of lock -in Street on the west side. According to police, a man was sitting on his porch when a vehicle passed and suspects began firing several shots. A man was taken to a nearby hospital. He had one gunshot wound. More on the future of the NCAA tournament.